What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. I hope everyone had a wonderful Thanksgiving weekend. If you live here in the States like I do, it was honestly so nice to have some time off and spend some quality time with my family. Um, but yeah, let's get into this hair transformation. I'm super excited to share this one with you guys because this client, she had virgin hair. So I always get super stoked when a client has virgin hair because I know the lift is going to be chef's kiss and just perfect because she doesn't have any artificial color or anything that is going to make the hair color um, a little bit more resistant so she, her hair is going to lift perfectly and beautifully so she is going for more of a pink underlight and she wants it to be very rosy and more on the rose gold side so we aren't going to be lifting her too too light but since she is about a level three and her hair texture is on the medium to coarse wavy side i am going to be mixing up um, some blonde me lightener and my first bowl of course if you guys have been watching all my videos is always going to be um, half six volume with 20 volume and I just mix that with like any developer I'm using the pulp right developer and then mixing that one to two with the powder which is the blonde me sword scoff part of powder And then of course, if you've been watching all my videos, after the very first bowl of a weaker bowl, I do go ahead and just do straight 20 volume. So I've already pre-sectioned where her under light will start and um, begin. And I usually in a consultation will ask them where they wanna see the color, if they want to have it super visible, or if they want it to be very hidden. And then we also take into consideration like their haircut because if she had layers, we probably wouldn't have to bring it up so high. But since she, her hair is pretty long and not super layered, um, we do have to bring this under light up pretty high for her to even see it when her hair is down. Um, also note that very first foil I did, um, I did fold it up, but all of these other foils, I'm just placing a whole new long foil right on top the reason why i folded that very first foil is because the hair on the hairline is just a little bit finer than the rest of the hair and i am still taking very paper thin sections as i'm painting on the lightener so i did fold that very first foil because i felt as though um, since the hairs are a little bit finer on the hairline it typically kind of um, slips because there's not enough uh, hair or product to give it a good hold like it would on these sections here. So I just give it a nice fold wherever I feel like around the hairline, the hair is a little bit thinner. And that is just to lock in the foil to prevent any bleeding because when you're doing under lights like this and you're doing slicing back to back, it's really important to try and prevent any type of bleeding. If in the chance you do start to see that your foils are kind of slipping because um, maybe there's a chemical reaction with some previous color to the lightener you can always put a cotton underneath that's a really great tip not only for under lighting but for highlighting in general too sometimes like if i move the, the foils and rinse some of the foils out i will definitely put a cotton underneath some foils that i kind of can see would um, start to bleed after moving around the foils So whenever doing any type of underlining application, it's very important to make sure that you're fully saturating, even if you're taking very thin sections here. Um, your section should be very paper thin. You should be able to see the foil um, behind the hair. And this is to ensure that you get a really nice even lift because since you're lightening this bottom part solid, um, it's going to be noticeable if some parts aren't lightened the same. So it's very important to overly saturate and just make sure that you're getting everything um, so that you don't have any like extra warm spots or unevenness when you pull out all the foils. 
So if you're wondering what a retouch would look like for this type of hair color, um, I would basically do the exact same sectioning pattern. And as I would retouch this, depending on how light the hair is, um, I will retouch the regrowth and then maybe put some conditioner on the previously lightened hair, depending also on how long the regrowth is. Okay, so as I'm moving towards the sides here, like I said again, since this first foil is right at the hairline and the hair is a little bit finer, I do go ahead and start to fold that up. And just depending on the hair, um, sometimes I'll do this like the first first three or so, um, just depending whether I feel like their hair will slope or not in the foil and then after that i just go ahead and start just laying the foil on top of each other and the reason why i don't like to fold all of the foils up is because sometimes that also can create an uneven lift especially on dark hair and if you're not taking a section that is super super thin um, just like as the lightener moves within that foil that is folded sometimes can create some warm spots so here you can see my client's hair lifted beautifully because of her beautiful virgin hair. Um, also, there was hardly any foil slipping concerning how long her hair was because it's virgin. A lot of times foils will start to slip if you have artificial color on the hair because the lightener as it's eating through whatever is on the hair can sometimes expand and um, turn into like a liquid form causing the foils to slip. Um, so yeah, since we're gonna be doing a rose gold color, I wasn't super concerned with lifting her hair super platinum. So I just wanted her to have a nice even lift. Um, our goal was about a level eight and nine because we're going to be using the Pulp Riot Rapid Toners and um, this Rapid Toner specifically is pretty pigmented. You can put it on hair that I would say is a level 7 and up for sure um, but definitely works best on levels 8 and up. So for her rose gold toner, I did go ahead and mix it one to two with the six volume. Um, because this toner is very pigmented and it is a rapid toner, I just wanted it to kind of be a little bit lighter than um, the standard mixing ratio of one to one. So I did mix it one to two just to dilute it a little bit. And I still feel like it's very pigmented. You can see here, I apply it on the root first and then apply it on the mids and ends afterwards. And you can already see that it's turning into a beautiful, pastel pink. So once I was done applying the whole rapid toner, I probably let it sit for about like 10 minutes and then rinsed with some cold water. Um, with the rapid toners, it is good to shampoo it out and then condition the hair, unlike the regular semi-tones because it is mixed with developer. So you want to make sure that you kind of get all of that out of the hair before you style it. Alrighty guys, so here is the finished look. You can see how pastel and beautiful the rose gold toner is mixed with a ratio of one to two with the six volume. And you can see since she parts her hair off to the side, on that heavy parted side, I did bring the underlight up a little bit higher. And when she wears her hair down, she can totally see the color even if she doesn't put her hair behind her ear like that. Um, it goes perfectly with the way that her hair is cut. And as this color starts to fade, as she starts to wash it at home, it will fade into a lighter pink before it gets to a blonde. And then from there, she can decide whether she wants to retouch up the underlight or a lot of times some of my clients um, like to transition their underlight into a balayage. There are so many options of what you can do with your hair after trying out this type of style. And yeah, I really love the way that this came out. I feel like the pink really suits her and looks great on her. So I would still consider this color as a creative color tone and I always tell my clients the maintenance on this is to wash with cold water using a really good sulfate free shampoo and conditioner and to try and wash as minimal as possible. I always recommend doing maybe like once or twice a week and then just using some dry shampoo in between. Alrighty guys, so that is it for this week's episode. Thank you guys so much for watching and tuning in and I can't say thanks enough. Um, I was super thankful because this past month this channel has hit 8,000 subscribers and I really can't believe it. So thank you again so much for all of your comments and support and I will talk to you guys next week.